Blessed day to everyone and welcome to Bread Common Duluyong. We are glad that you are here with us in our online worship service. And may God bless us as we sing praises, worship Him, and listen to His Word. Psalm 100 verse 5 says, For the Lord is good, His steadfast love endures forever, and His faithfulness to all generations. Truly, the Lord is faithful. And I personally can't imagine how God has shown His faithfulness to us, how He has shown His strength, how He has sustained us throughout the year. All I know is God is faithful. And as we look back, as we reflect upon this year, may we ask ourselves, how has God shown His faithfulness to us this year? I think it's good to really reflect on that truth. And I hope that whatever we are going through, our hearts are still filled with passion in serving God. If you would like to serve with us, you can do so by, by just one click. You can share our worship services, our midweek services, Tag your friends, but in this way, you are serving God and partnering in the spreading of the gospel. And if you want to partner with us by giving, here are our bank details. As we begin our worship service, let me read to you Psalm 27. Verses 4 to 5. One thing I have asked of the Lord, I will seek after. I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple, for he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. Let us pray. Father God, truly it is a great privilege. We are able to experience your grace. We are able to experience your faithfulness. And it is our prayer, O oh God, that you move in us through our worship service. Use your word to correct us. Use your word to bring comfort to us. Encourage us. Teach us your ways. And we pray, O oh God, that you would cause us to respond to your word and glorify you in the way we live. We offer everything to you with thanksgiving in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Morning and Happy Lord's Day! Christmas is around the corner. Most of us are trying to buy Christmas gifts for our loved ones. As part of who we are, we Filipinos love to bargain for the price. Nakikipagtawaran as we call it. This negotiation makes shopping more enjoyable. Speaking of negotiation and negotiables, Did you know that there are things in our life that are non-negotiable? This pandemic has forced us to look into our lives, teaching us to weigh between important and less important things that we have in our life right now. Now, it's crucial to learn what are those non-negotiables we have in our life so that we may be able to hold on and focus To the important things and let go and spend less time to less important ones. Now what are the non-negotiables in our lives? Our passage this morning is taken from Exodus chapter 34 verses 1 to 27. The presence of God the Father. This is the first non-negotiable in our life. Our story picks up from where we left off last Sunday. For those of you who are not able to listen to last Sunday's message, the Israelites committed a big blunder by worshiping a golden calf that they made. Moses, coming from on top of Mount Sinai, furiously threw at them the stone tablets where the Ten Commandments is engraved, smashing it to pieces. Now, in our passage, Moses is on Mount Sinai once again, talking to God. God is in the process of engraving the Ten Commandments on stone tablets for the second time. This is an indication that God is renewing His covenant to Israelites. With His hand covering Moses, who is behind a rock, He passed in front of him. Moses is able to have a glimpse of God's glorious presence. And in verse 8 and 9, this is a part of Moses' prayer to God. And Moses quickly bowed his head toward earth and worshiped. And he said, If now 
I have found favor in your sight, O Lord. Please let the Lord go in the midst of us, for it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. As we have just read, Moses requested God to go with them as they enter the promised land. He knew the importance of God's presence going with them. Now, speaking of the importance of God's presence, the book of Exodus opened with God's glorious presence in chapter 3, where he revealed himself to Moses in a burning bush. And Exodus closes in chapter 40, where God's glorious presence filling the tabernacle. Moses knew how important God's presence to go with his people. Now, why is God's presence so important to dwell in the midst of Israel? Why can we see a lot of activities of God's glorious presence in the book of Exodus? So that the surrounding nations will see that they are God's possession. The very presence of God dwelling in their midst is what separates Israel from other nations. Exodus 19, 5 and 6. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. God's presence dwelling in their midst is not an option. It is a necessity. His presence is what separates them from the other nations. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, we see a similar calling to all who believe and follow Jesus. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Just like the Israelites in our passage, God's presence in a believer's life is not an option, it is a necessity and non-negotiable. As we experience great trial of this pandemic, many of us are asking for blessings, thinking that these blessings in the midst of suffering will allow people to get to know God. Now, this is good, and there's nothing wrong with that. However, Moses had a different perspective. In Exodus 33, 15 and 16, he prays, and he said to him, If your presence will not go with me, do not bring us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people? Is it not in your going with us so that we are distinct, I and your people, from every other people on the face of the earth? What Moses is saying here is that he will have to say no to the blessing of the promised land if God's presence will not go with them as they enter it. Another way of putting this is, he would rather stay in a bad place in the wilderness with God's presence than to be in a better place without God's presence. This pandemic is a bad situation. But this can be a great opportunity for us to let other people see that God's presence is with us. These are times when people around us should see our difference from them. That difference is God's presence working in our life. 
This will happen in the way we respond to this situation, the way we conduct our lives, and the decisions we make. It is a good thing to testify about God's blessing in our life in the midst of these uncertain times. But it is transformational when people see God's presence working in us as we go through troubles and suffering in our life and we're still able to stand firm and praise our God because His presence is with us, working in us and through us. The second non-negotiable in our life is the rule of God the Father. Verse 10, And He said, Behold, I am making a covenant. Before all your people, I will do marvels, such as have not been created in all the earth or in any nation. And all the people among whom you are shall seek the work of the Lord, for it is an awesome thing that I will do with you. Now God is renewing His covenant with His people. He told Moses what He would do through him, and that is to perform great things, acts that had never been seen before by other nations. And then He tells Moses what His children should do. This includes obeying His commands, making no covenant with other people, do not worship nor create idols, and tear down altars of idols. In these following verses, if, we, if you will look at your Bible and read it, we will see that God is the one who is dictating the terms of the covenant, not the other way around. When His children form the golden calf, it is a representation of their desire to have a God where they can dictate their own terms. That is not how the covenant works. They need to fulfill God's terms, not theirs. They have to obey God no matter what happens. It is a non-negotiable absolute rule of God in their life. The result is God's mighty acts displayed in their midst. In times of uncertainties, God's rule in our life is non-negotiable. We may have devised a plan as a reaction or response to this pandemic. We may have planned our next steps. Or we may even decided on a lot of things already. It is very helpful to evaluate all these reactions and responses by asking ourselves what influences us to take these steps. Is it out of fear? The Israelites allowed fear to rule over their hearts when they think Moses is not coming back from Mount Sinai. Out of that fear, they decided to make a golden calf to worship, a decision that they regretted for the rest of their life, a decision that cast a shadow on them until the New Testament times. Are the steps we made was based on what the people of our society was doing? That was the step Aaron took. He allowed the influence of people around him to rule his judgments. And the result was he led 3,000 people to their death. God's rule in our life is non-negotiable, even in times of uncertainties. It prevents us from making rash decisions, allow us to have a right understanding to what is going on around us, and sift the voices in our hearts that compels us to act. James chapter 4, 14 and 15. How do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fog. It's here a little while, then it's gone. What you ought to say is, if the Lord wants us to, we will live and do this 
or that. The third non-negotiable in our life is worshiping God the Father. In verses 19 to 27, we have a lengthy instructions about celebrating feasts, sacrifices, and offerings. And in the middle of these instructions includes the Sabbath or rest. These are all instruction on proper worship because of what he has done, what he is doing, and what he will still do in the life of the Israelites. There is an interesting part here in verses 23 and 24. Three times in the year shall all your males appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel. The context of what God's instruction on worship is that when the Israelites are already inside the promised land, Remember that God also said in the previous chapters that He will not drive away their enemies living in the promised land in one single attack. In fact, Joshua and the generation with him took seven years to drive away their enemies. So if three times a year all their men will have to gather for worship and their enemies are still living in the land, what would be a possible scenario for them? they will be attacked by their enemies because all their abled men are not ready for war because they are worshiping God. For this to become possible, God made a way. In verse 24, it says, For I will cast out nations before you and enlarge your borders. No one shall covet your land when you go up to appear before the Lord your God three times in the year. Clearly, God is showing that coming together to worship Him is a top priority. Coming together to worship Him is non-negotiable. In these pandemic times, it is good to hear some people say that they miss coming together in a worship venue and worship God. It only shows that somehow, this pandemic showed us how we take for granted our worship assembly. Before the pandemic, going to church is an option. It depends on how early or late we get up from our bed. There are also times that we choose to rest than going to church because we have been working really hard during the week. There are also instances that we are more interested to have our R&R than to worship God together with our brethren. I am convinced that this virus did not come from God the Father. Yet there are times I wonder if he is using this virus to keep or to wake his children. Wake up call because gathering together to worship God has become an option for us. It has become a negotiable thing in our life. Maybe the church has diverted from celebrating His salvation to performance-oriented activities and programs. Maybe worship has become work-oriented rather than resting in the presence of God the Father. Maybe we made the church about us rather than the Father's salvation through Jesus Christ. Maybe we made ourselves more than or more of a religion that elevates ourselves rather than a church that comes together and lift up and worship the name of our Lord. Brothers and sisters, now is a good time to reflect on how we view our worship assembly or church worship. So let us review the non-negotiables that we have learned in times of uncertainties. Number one, the presence of God the Father. And two, the rule of God the Father. And three, worshiping God the Father. These three non-negotiables are God's provisions for us in times of uncertainties so that we will experience His rest in the midst of restlessness. And we have these non-negotiables if Christ is in us. Jesus says in John 14, 6, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father 
except through me. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these reminders. Thank you for in Christ we have these non-negotiables in our life so that we can experience rest when the world is so restless and looking to experience peace. We thank you, Lord, that we are not ruled by fear. We are not ruled by false judgment, but we are ruled by you and your leading is upon us in our life. So we pray, Lord, that you will continue to communicate to us, continue to reveal our hearts to us. Thank you for your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord for His message. And if you are blessed with God's Word, or you have any questions or testimonies you want to proclaim, you can send us a message in our FB page, Bredco Mandaluyong. As we end, let's end on a short prayer. Father God, Truly, you are good and you are faithful. We pray that you fill our hearts with joy, fill our hearts with passion in seeking you, in serving you, in glorifying your name. We pray for your power as we meditate and reflect upon your word you would use it so powerfully that we can be salt and light to this world we can be instruments of your grace to the people glorify yourself in our lives O God in Jesus name we pray Amen the Lord bless you and keep you May the Lord make His face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.